Hey guys, Nike here. I wanted to uh, do a new build series where I talk about the uh, revamped level 80 boost. If you guys aren't aware, they revamped the level 80 boost gear that you get instead of getting soldier's gear. Uh, you now get full celestial, which enables you to basically uh, play an all-arounder, play any sort of build that you want to experiment with while you're gearing your character. It's a great change and uh, makes things way better. But um, I want to talk about how to um, get the most out of it. And this is really good for new players um, or people that are relatively new but have never played a certain class and they just want to boost and play a good build in it. So I'm going to do a build video for every profession where I tell you what I would do um, with my level 80 boost gear to have uh, a good experience while I'm uh, gearing out my character and working towards uh, a, an actual full ascended like meta end game sort of build. So I'm gonna start with Warrior, obviously, because it's uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, and as you can see, we'll go through the gear. Everything is full exotic celestial. That's what you get in the boost gear. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this on a budget. Uh, so, I'll let you know right now, you're gonna to have to buy sigil, a Sigil of Force for each weapon set. Um, so that's two Sigils of Force, two Sigils of Accuracy. Those together is gonna to cost you less than two gold. Um, so you will need two gold, which you can get from just one day's worth of dailies um, to get your Sigils. Um, we're gonna use a Greatsword and Sword Warhorn um, from the boost gear. Although again, it's boost gear, you're gonna get uh, stuff that you can experiment with. So, moving on to the armor. Again, everything is full celestial. So we'll have a pretty damn good uh, gear set for what we want to do. Um, we are going to buy new runes. You get Rune of the Warrior in the boost set. Rune of the Warrior, not so good. Rune of Strength, however, very good. And you can buy six runes of strength for a very affordable price. And at the time of this recording, I think that they are like 20 silver each. So a little bit over a gold, you can get a full set of strength runes. Now the name and game of this build is going to be based around uh, basically easily getting permanent fury and permanent 25 might while you're fighting, having permanent swiftness because maybe you don't, you're a new player, you don't have a mount yet, um, and, and so on and so forth. The, uh, the boon up time is going to be considerable. As you can see from the stats, we have a pretty decent crit chance. We are going to have 43% boon duration and 93% uh, might duration. So we're going to have super good might. Um, quickly going to skills, you can see we have sword and warhorn. Warhorn basically just gives us really good boons and helps with our uptime sword. We'll do a little bit of bleeding. Um, it gives us a movement skill, which is very good, and it gives us a nice big power execute skill. Um, all in all, uh, it, is it is a Condi weapon. It's considered to be a Condi weapon, but the power coefficients on sword are actually pretty good, especially on final thrust. So it's a bit of a hybrid weapon. The burst skill, not particularly a great um, power skill. But you can basically, uh, you're, you're only going to, you're not going to be camping this, the, this weapon set. Basically, as you're running around the world, you're going to be using your movement skill, you're going to be using charge, and when you get into combat, you're, you're pretty much going to want to switch to your greatsword anyway. And then for skills, we're going to have healing signet, and we're going to go with signet of might, signet of fury. For great justice is so good in this build, it gives us an insane amount of Might and Fury, and then Signet of Rage is going to give us more boons. The whole point of this build, as I said, is easily having 25 Might, easily having Permanent Fury, easily having big boon uptime. Um, the uh, Great Sword is going to have a lot of synergy in the build. We have a trait, which we'll get to, that's going to make us easily able to stack a lot of Might. Um, and you will see how that synergizes with everything we are going to do when we move on to specializations. 
All right, so for specializations, we are going to take Strength, Tactics, and Spellbreaker. Obviously, when you boost, if you haven't unlocked Spellbreaker, you're not going to have immediate access to it. However, you will have some hero points that you could put into Spellbreaker just to get the spec started and start unlocking it um, if you are judicious with your use of hero points. And it doesn't matter if you choose to go into HOT, you can start working on Spellbreaker uh, immediately. And the same uh, goes if you want to start with POF and, and do an HOT spec. It doesn't matter which campaign you actually do. You can unlock the elite spec uh, for that campaign or for the other campaign. So let's go through the traits. We're going to take peak performance. It's a basically a damage boost. You like to see it. Um, doesn't we don't care about the, uh, the buff that it gives, but the 5% outgoing damage is pretty good. Um, let's see, building momentum, blah, blah, blah. Forceful Greatsword, this is sort of the bread and butter on the hit. We gain more power and we gain might on crit. Um, and that is all very, 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 very good having might on crit, as you will see. And then we have pinnacle of strength. Might, we, uh, might applied to us gives us more power. So might is more effective on us. And then our grandmaster trait is might makes right. So what does might makes right do? Whenever you apply might to yourself, you heal. And you heal for 145 and you gain some endurance. So this build is constantly making might. Almost everything we do will gain us might. So we are constantly healing. There is amazing amount of heals incoming. And we do have with Celestial Gear healing power. The, so most of the thing, most of the heals don't scale particularly well with healing power. But I mean, it's a it's a stat that we have. It's free. It's good. Uh, you might say, why not Berserker's power? Isn't that more damage? Yes, Berserker's power would be more damage. However, this build is mostly designed for open world. Um, and what I would find is most people that are using this build are probably going to really value the sustain that you get from Might Makes Right and this setup. Um, moving on to tactics, we are going to take Roaring, Roaring Rep, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, that French word, um, but essentially it makes our Warhorn skills better and gives us more boon duration. We like all of those things. It gives us more access to Fury, access to Resistance, um, and gives us boon duration. We like that. Um, empowered, you deal 1% more damage for every boon on you. It's pretty good. Empowered allies, out nearby uh, allies gain 100 power. You count as a nearby ally, so you gain 100 power. So it is a very high upside thing. When you're by yourself, you gain 100 power. That's pretty good. When you're around other people, you're buffing them. So they appreciate that, and it also helps things out. Um, now here is a really cool thing, Mending Might. Applying Might to an ally heals you. Well, you count, uh, that counts for you, so you also heal. So in addition to uh, 145 uh, healing from Might Makes Right, you also heal from Mending Might, so you're gaining quite a bit of health whenever you apply Might. And then we are going to take Phalanx Strength as our Grandmaster. Whenever you gain might yourself, you grant it to nearby allies. Essentially, what this is going to do is if you... Uh, mostly, again, I'm assuming that you're going to be playing solo most of the time. However, there will be times where there's other people around. All of a sudden, you will be buffing them, and they will appreciate that. The benefit of that is you also heal yourself when you apply might to them. So you are going to have the most over-the-top, insane incoming sustain ever. And the more people that are around you, the more sustain you get. So you are going to be, anytime you take damage, you're going to heal it right back up. And since we have uh, a pretty thick amount of toughness and a thick amount of vitality, this build is going to be very hard to kill. You are going to be doing good. And with all the might, all the fury, and and everything else you're actually going to be doing pretty good damage too so this build really is uh, super strong in spellbreaker we are going to take pure strike it will increase uh the, our crit damage we like that um it's doubled against boonless foes we really like that because most enemies you fight in the game do not have boons so pretty pretty darn good we're gonna take slow counter um because it applies 
a cripple and slow when we full counter. And you would be surprised uh, when you're fighting open world mobs, how effective these are as a defensive measure. Um, not only will our condition duration from the celestial gear apply to these things, but what you'll find is you'll jump into a big crowd of mobs, you'll proc your full counter, which will proc slow counter, and it's boom, AOE, uh, AOE, massive amount of slow and cripple. The mobs, now that they're slowed, they are going to be doing very small amounts of damage to you. And the other side is if the mob is more powerful and has a break bar, slow will actually chew through their break bar pretty well. Um, and then lastly, we're going to take Mage Bane Tether, which is obviously super good. It allows us to gain a ton and ton of might. And additionally, if you need to CC someone when they have the Mage Bane Tether up, you can use either your Greatsword Rush skill to run away from them and break the tether and pull them to you, which would also potentially break their break bar, or use your sword to uh, leap to uh, also break the break bar. So that's the traits, and uh, all, all, all told, this is a super, super good build. Um, if you hit your level 80 boost on your warrior, and you set up this build, I think it's gonna cost you some, it's gonna cost you under five gold to buy the, the runes and sigils. You will be rocking with this build um, as you work your way towards getting an ascended setup and work your way towards um, making like an end game, like raid and fractal sort of build. This build will just kind of dominate uh, solo open world play and story mode and even like small group stuff that you randomly encounter in open world. This build will just do it all and uh, you will enjoy it. So take it from me, this works very well. Um, if you want the uh, link to the build, it will be in the description below. So uh, feel free to try it out guys. That's it for me, thank you so much. I will be back uh, with another video in the series pretty soon. But uh, anyway, have a great day. Talk to you guys soon.